This video will be on how to set up a height map if you already have a 3D model and you want to make that a height map into beam and G. So with the blender cube here as an example, the basic cube that you start with, you can see the size of this thing is pretty close to that. You can scale it smaller, but don't make it too big. If it's already a large life-size model, then scale it down. You need it to be smaller for the height map to work right. Now, I don't know what the elevation of that thing is in real life. And I don't know how to tell the height map in here what shade of gray is that tall. Because it doesn't matter really what, how tall you make that shade of gray. Unless you have a control where the white is the absolute tallest and the black is the absolute lowest and you know the exact altitude of that mesh in real life then you won't know what to put for the altitude in beam mg for maximum terrain height it's that simple but knowing what they are is another thing i don't know what they are i just eyeball it say well you know that looks like it's about damn uh, 1000 meters i think that'll work if it don't then it's 1200 i just go by eyeballing it no one's going to go out there with no measuring stick to see if you got it accurate. If they do, they play in the wrong game. Because uh, it ain't that damn serious. Uh, so anyway, let's get a camera. But to do that, we need to be at a top-down view. And we will create the camera from that view. Then we will rotate around and see our camera is in the ground. We'll move it up. And we will change the camera settings to orthographic. Then we will render this in a square size so that it is not square. Because you can only use square power of twos for your terrain blocks. Find the area that you would like to make into a map. By adjusting the camera's shift while looking out of the camera, of course. While moving the shift around, you will move around the thing that you're making. If you change the orthographic scale, then you're changing the area that you are making into a map. How close or how far away it is, you know what I'm saying? So whatever you want is fine. It's what you want. I think I'll do this one a little different than the last one I did. The last one I did, I did of this, someone said, you should make that into a map. I agree. I think it's a damn good starter for a map. I probably would do a closer up, more closer, closer to the main thing here to focus more on that and less of the outskirts. But yeah, I think we'll, treat, we'll see what comes up with it, what happens with it. So, but you'll render that first with Eevee. 8192 by 8192. Uh, and do 8-bit RGB. Take off the compression. And render. Alright. Somebody forgot a step. In the shader for this object that you imported in, there should be texture for it. If you see a texture, there's a texture here. Go to the emission tab and open that up and then drag the color to the color and put the strength at 1. That way it's self-emissive. And then when you go to the render, turn off shadows. And in the camera view, now you're ready to render. I'll leave that in there so someone else will have a dark render and wonder what did I do wrong well that's what it, you did wrong so that's your base texture map if you are not only doing if you're only doing 4096 by 4096 then don't render 4096 uh, just render 4k but I'm gonna do 4k 8k because 8k looks better so we'll save it in the level that we're gonna test it in for the level of my choosing 
Well, let's just pick one. Let's just pick one so you can see how to do this too. We'll load a level that we want to take over with our own terrain block. I would pick one that is friendly to the environment you want to make. If you're making a beach thing or something like that, you know, you probably want to You know what I'm saying. You'll want to pick the one that, damn, if you're making a jungle kind of map, pick that stuff. If you're making a, you know, a, one of these kinds of places, or one of them, you know, they got different assets to make different things, uh, depending on which it is you want to make. I think small island works good because it's got the, it's small, but uh, I like all the assets on it. But you may say, well, I like the assets on Italy. But you can you can do that too. Italy's got a lot of stuff you'd have to delete though. A lot of objects everywhere. This has a few too, but say you want to do Utah, that's fine. You can do it. Just load Utah, do it to Utah. You can always delete the folder and go back to the original game. It's not a problem. While that's doing that, loading that, we'll go back to here, and now we will set up our shader map shader texture so go to to input add an input geometry and then add a converter a separate XYZ and then add a converter color ramp and then add a shader emissive emission you'll connect the position to the vector and the Z to the fact and then the color to the color and the alpha to the strength. And then you will run this into that and you get your height map. But you got to adjust it because you can see that is clipping very badly. So you'll need to raise it or lower it. And if that doesn't solve the problem, shrink it some more. There's only a limited amount of room this thing can really process. And if the thing's too big, it doesn't do well. You know, it runs out of colors, I guess you could say. So if you scale it smaller, scale it bigger, that'll give you some adjustment. But really what's going to matter is moving it up and down. You want it at zero. That's the ground. Zero is the ground, basically. But as you can see, the ground is not really the ground when the model is below the ground in some places. So you'd want to make this not below ground, even if it's truly at zero and centered. It's not really. It's under it. You want to raise it up. So the lowest point is at ground zero. That's what I'm trying to say. That'll make that the darkest shade it can be for the lowest point. And then you will um, basically render your height map now. That's fine. It's Everything's in check. You can adjust these if you want to have more contrast in your elevation. I would leave it all the same though. I wouldn't mess with that. Render this. Oh. Yeah, render it. Save it as. Uh, rendered it wrong. Shit. Someone did that too, I'm sure, so they'll need to see what to do. Go back to where you render th uh, stuff here. Tell it black and white, 16-bit depth color, no compression. And you'll save it that way too. I did try doing a 32-bit linear, 32-bit linear, what the fuck is it? Linear floating point or some shit. I did that earlier. It didn't work. It crashed every time. I don't know if it's because I rendered it as a TIFF and then converted it. I don't know what the deal was with it. Anyway, we save this now. We save this as our height map. It's going to go in the level. So in the level that we have decided, it was Utah. So we load Utah and we go to the editor. We say save the level. Once saved, it'll appear now in your user folder. If you
you have not already done any editing to it, there will not be one in there. If there is one in there, then, well, that's the one you're still going to be using. <laughs> so Utah shows up, and it's just going to have the changes that you make to it. If you mess with the terrain block, well, guess what? It's going to put it in this folder. It's just not going to overwrite the install folder. That's why these folders are here. So they just contain the damage you do. So back to uh, Blender. Our render should be complete. What we'll do now is save this as black and white 16-bit, no compression, in the Utah folder. Utah folder. Just in the root here is fine. You can name it if you want to name it. It's up to you. But save it as black and white 16-bit. Taking a while to save that one. Now the render that you rendered earlier, you should be able to get to that through the shader as well. It should be in here. Uh, but you know what? You know what we did? We didn't save it. And the one we just rendered overrode it, so it's no problem. All you gotta do is just re-render it. Just connect that back to that. Just re-render it, but do RGB 8-bit. And this time, save it. Now, I was, for some reason, I thought it held more than one damn render in the buffer, or, you know, in the not being saved at the moment kind of stuff, but uh, I guess it, it swaps them out each time. Save as. In there, this will be your base color map. Now, there is a way... If you want to do this even different and better, well, this is this is all you have to do for this basically. Um, you would basically have to bake the textures instead, which would be the same process, except you'd be baking uh, with the cycles render engine, and you would need to make a mesh plane that's going to be the size of the height map. You still got to get the height map this way. But this map, this will be your new texture. And you want it to be exact, like exact, exact. I mean, not, not a hundred million to the percentage <laughs> exact, but you know pretty damn close you can probably lock the thing so that it does better uh, stuff like that because it doesn't matter how close you get to something you'll always see that somewhere it's not lined up see it's off here so it needs to be a little bigger just a little but I'm not going to spend all day on that That'll be good enough for our lesson here. What you'll do is find the distance between that mesh plane and the top of that. That way you have your extrusion amount. It is 1.67 meters, so we'll just put one point, uh, we'll put two, two meters. But we'll put, if we go to our render thing here and change it to cycles GPU compute and you will go to bake and you will bake a diffuse without the direct and indirect lighting you will pick selected to active open that up put that extrusion amount to meters and it doesn't matter where you are in here looking at a camera it doesn't use that camera You'll select the high poly model and then hold shift and pick the mesh plane. Once you do that, you will create a new texture for that mesh plane. It'll make this 
you'll add a texture image and if you were doing say 4k you would put 4k here you don't need an alpha channel that takes up even more room you don't need that here so say new image and then over here where you set up the cycles thing you'll want to change that samples to a lower number unless you got all day to wait on it to render you can also select the GPU if you got a GPU that you want to use instead of the CPU but if you do that you need to enable that in the preferences in the system before you can use it you got to pick it whichever one you got you pick it put the checkbox then you get the option and then you just press bake you'll get your results over here it does take longer to do cycles render than Eevee 4k is not too bad but like once you get to 8k the damn time goes up exponentially but I think that's because I don't got enough RAM I think it's running out of memory and taking an extra long time so that's the render basically um, or the bake rather it's basically just photocopied this things from the ground up under that sheet of paper more or less you'll save it as and in there you can just put uh, baked base whatever you want to put no compression RGB 8-bit now you want to render normals go to normals change the color space to linear if you haven't unselected anything everything should still be selected if not if you clicked off somewhere click the model hold shift select that make sure that is selected that's the one you're baking to it is possible to bake in the wrong direction and bake the thing's texture on top of its texture and it screws it up you have to reload it reload the texture if you do that you'll know you did that because it takes a hell of a long time to do you'll wonder what's taking so long this will be the normal mapping a damn good normal map too save this as just put a little in for normal RGB uh, linear color space RGB 8-bit I, I know you render with linear but I don't know if it matters when you save it does it really make a difference I don't think so but maybe it does then you'll render ambient occlusion leaving it on linear uh, color space and bake it and you got the height map already. The only other one is the roughness. And that's giving me problems. I don't know why. I've had a hell of a time rendering roughness maps lately. They just don't render. They render nothing. So I'll just convert the damn image that's... I'll just reuse basically the base color map for the roughness. If it don't want to render what I want it to render, I mean, I'll just switch it out with the other one put AO for ambient occlusion now we'll try to do the roughness in the things thing here we'll connect the color to the roughness maybe give it a little metallic I don't know just something so it's got something shiny about it or something I guess to be rough it's got to have some kind of something you know to be showing the roughness from you know what I'm saying so pick that then pick the thing there pick this tell it roughness and hopefully you'll get an image a lot of times I just render and it's just white and I don't know why I never had that problem before two blender updates ago but now it seems to be an issue.
It rendered that time. Good. That's great. Things do all work out sometimes. All right, so R for roughness. Now we can go back to the game. We are now set to delete this terrain block and import our new one. So we will select in here the terrain block once we find it. The terrain block. The terrain block. Press delete. Damn, what the hell did I do? Press delete. All this other stuff. <laughs> That's all 3D models. Yeah. I would, you know what? What I would do, I'd hide the sun sky. I mean, I would lock it. And the first thing I'd do, I'd go to the forest tool. I'd pick that thing there. I'd get far away, and I'd select the entire map. I can't see it all. Uh, well, press type info. Turn the fog off. Put the fog at zero. Turn the view distance to about, I don't know, 150,000 or however many you want. So that you can see the entire terrain block. And you'll see what's actually just a 3D model and what's the actual terrain block. With that forest thing selected. Select it all. It may get a little slow for you. You may need to do this in sections. The more you pick, the longer it takes. But I like to just get it all done. If you know you're not using this stuff and you want to just get rid of it, you can go to the thing here and find them in here. They got their stuff really organized. It's not too difficult to find everything. You got a million audio samples. Uh, man, there's a lot of stuff in here. I'll let you do all that deleting. I don't want to spend the time doing that. We'll just import our block and put it above all that. That's what we'll do. Terrain tools. Import terrain. Now this is the part that I set. I don't know what the max height is for that damn place. So, not knowing that, I'm just going to guess. 1,000 meters. Pick the height map image. That would be the one that says height map, or whatever you saved it as. It will be red if you saved it correctly. That's grayscales represented in red in here in beam when you have it true grayscale. Pixels, meters per pixels, I do 0.5. Gives you more detail. It will make that 8K terrain 4K in actual size, but that don't matter. It'll look better. Import. And then after a bit, it'll appear somewhere. Usually not where the other one was. And then you'll go to your terrain library, your material library, which you normally get to through here and picking it there, but I got mine anchored in here. So it's always there. You'll upgrade terrain materials. Because anytime you import a terrain block, it's going to ask you to do that. Most of the time, I've seen it not ask one time. Once you do that, it takes a bit. You'll know it's done when you can press close. 8192 does take longer. But it's worth it. It looks better. Ah, damn. No one is ever going to make a map with a texture that damn small. I don't know why that's a default. But 8192, 8192. I personally do my macro and details if I use them at 4096. Since I have a lot of 4096 textures already. It just makes sense. I can use them in either one of these. Apply changes. Then we'll just make a new material. 
We'll just call this, uh, what's it called? I don't know. It's called Cape something. I don't know. Pick a ground model type. And then I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to pick grass. I don't know. Base color. And you can't add anything until you add the material. Once you do that, it'll appear here. Then you can add your material. Uh, we'll just do the... We'll do the one that we rendered, uh, the baked, I'm sorry, the baked one first, see if that does good. I'd rather use them anyway, because I got all the maps. I can properly fill all these five slots up. Utah. All right. So here's the base, baked base. And you will see that I rendered this at 4096. So, I don't know what I was thinking. Base texture 4096. Takes care of that. Just means everything from here on has to be that. If you use a, any of these base materials or anything else, it's got to be 4096. So that will go there. The normal We'll go to the normal. Let me say, the base color, base texture goes to there. The base texture, normals, because that's got normal mapping too, or can have it. Well, this will drive you bananas, man, but you have to keep navigating through all the damn menus to get back to the damn place where you got your stuff. I'll just copy this a lot of times to the clipboard. That way I can just easily paste it and hit enter. That way when I click, I'm, you know, I'm already here. Well, so the normals go there. Roughness. Roughness has a base map. That's rough too. Still got the damn... What I'll do is make a folder in here sometimes that's not being used. It just makes it uh, easier to navigate because you can select it, right? And when you paste this into there, it goes to the right spot. Like I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now you're where you need to be. For some reason, if you tell it to be the folder that you need to be in, it stops one folder prior. I don't know why. That's why I got the extra folder there. So that's the roughness. The ambient occlusion that goes with the base map. And then the height map. Now technically, you can get by with only the base color map. You don't even need the ambient occlusion map. You could put that in there if you needed to, if you didn't have this map, and leave all the others blank. That's the bare minimum to have a texture. Now that I rendered at 8192. And also no problem. We just render <laughs> we re-render it. But I did move all that shit around, so now I got to just scale it. It'll be alright. We can do that. It won't take long. That's something that doesn't take too long to do. Alright, scale it to 4K. I don't think that height map in the terrain paint actually does much of anything, to be honest. A lot of times I won't even fool with it. I'll just stick the roughness map in there. 
So all I can tell it does is at the edge of the texture it makes it look a little fringed, which still doesn't blend well. Export as. Oh, you want to change that bit depth too if you use their height map. I mean, if you use a 16 bit to do your height map, you'll want to make this now 8 bit integer. Or it's not going to do right, it's not going to work. If you try to do 16 bit in there, I mean, it won't crash, but you won't get the full effect. Because without the height map or something in the height map slot, you won't see the normals. And you won't see the normals if you don't have a roughness in there. So you got to have those roughness height in addition to the ambient occlusion and base you have to have for the normals to show up. You can't just put the base in the ambient occlusion and stick the normals in there and think you're going to get the normal mapping. No, you got to have a roughness and height map in addition to that for the normals to show up. Someone, I'm sure, saved it 16-bit. No wonder what they need to do. Well, this is what you need to do. Rescale it. And then pick it again in here. The 4K version. Now you should be able to save changes to file. Add the material here. And only once you've added it here can you delete the warning material. Not a minute sooner. The scale is not going to be right. You got to scale it to whatever you rendered it as. We rendered this one at 4K, so we set that to 4K. That way that image takes up the entire terrain block. And once again I'm wrong, the height map was rendered at 8K, so this needs to be 8K. Even though it was rendered at 4K resolution, it needs to be scaled up to 8K since that is the size of the terrain block. We imported a terrain block that was that height. That's what it expects. And this does not look good to me. It don't look that good, to be honest with you. It don't look good at all. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to candy coat it. It just looks like shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. I think we're better off yeah, we're better off with the with the with just the render texture. So let's do that instead. We'll render the do the eighty one ninety two one that we did with the Eevee when we rendered that. The quick one, the one that didn't take long. Now just so people will see when you change this you'll find that when you the next time you click on the save button, you'll get that. If anybody tries to make a terrain paint and they get that, then most likely this is not that resolution. Whatever that's set to, you don't have that set to. Or you're using a DDS file. You can't. JPEG or PNG. And if it's um, either or, it's still got to be 8-bit. So now we'll replace this with our good one. I should have just stuck with it. I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking that would look better, but it don't. And we, we did everything correctly. It just don't look good. Hey, you know what? Remember when I did the roughness? I give it that metallic. I bet that was it. What do you think? Probably. Well, too late now. It's gone. do you know one time I had one of these damn boxes somehow I don't know how I did it but it, the damn box oh it was this down here I had that all the way up to there but I didn't see this so I thought something was wrong with my game I couldn't see anything but gray and I didn't realize it was a damn box that was taking up the whole screen and then one time one of these boxes 
for some way got off screen and was like if the TV or screen was a couple feet more to the left. This is where that box was. I don't know how that happened either. So this is the 8192 and just sticking to the bare minimum, not having the others. We're going to do like I said to do and just recycle that damn one that's up there at the top into there. Much, much better. Much better. Now this is just going to happen. It's just the way the elevation thing works. It doesn't do well if anything is concave because, well, the terrain can't go concave. So if it's concaved, it does not do right. Also, you can go to the terrain here. And inside of there, change the base texture size to the highest it'll go, which is 4096. I don't know what light map size does, but you could change that too. I did find the, sh the shadows on this particular thing for some reason look kind of, you know what I mean? I don't know if that's just something that's on the Utah map that causes that. Uh, but it is the shadows, obviously. I did try to change the sun sky the shadows in here by making them softer but they're not as obvious I hate when the camera does that shit it starts to go off on its own like someone's driving it and I behind the wheel it just goes where it wants to go all right I'll change the time of day to something more daylight. Um, where was I at? I was talking about these shadows. Yeah, so I adjusted the softness, trying to make them look a little, a little better. They need to get a better lighting solution, I think, personally. Well, I don't know. Make the texture size larger. But I think what happens is, see, this thing, it just by default with the settings here, it basically reduces the LODs, LOD size for this. The farther away you are, the less polys it is. Uh, if you were to put this at, say, zero, it would show you the full 376 million or 37 million polys that's in here right now. It's either 300, and, no, it's got to, it can't be 300 million, it's got to be 37 million. But as you can see, even with this thing at its fullest quality, the RTX 4080 is good and on at about 19 frames a second. But it's the full quality all the way out there if you're taking screenshots that's what you'd want you'd want to see it at its fullest quality out there instead of seeing it at a looking like that far away and if you have performance problems you can always try to increase the LOD so that you get even less polys that's, we're down to 300 million I'm sorry 300,000 now it doesn't seem to matter for me though my frame rate but I'm sure there's probably systems out there that would greatly benefit with a lower poly count terrain block. This one's exceptionally high because it's 8K and it's crunched down to the size of a 4K map. That's why so many polys. But that's what that does. But like I said, it may give some folks some better performance. put this back yeah I don't know about the shadows I don't I don't have a damn clue maybe somebody else has a better insight and can tell me because I'd like to know 
know, the worst level from Shadows is a uh, small grid. That thing sucks. Everything looks bad in it. I think that's the most basic light model they got and they use in there. I haven't messed around with all the different stuff they can do with the lighting system in the, uh, in the game yet, so I couldn't tell you what all of them do. I know that don't look right because there's no grass there. But I did tell the terrain to be grass. Good thing I put some grass in it. Uh, the ground model, ground uh, covers. Uh, where are they at? All right, so we got all these ground covers. We can assign to our our texture known as cape. So each one of these types. There may be multiple ones in this each one. It's difficult to know exactly which ones are really ones that you should use. It's up to you, whatever you want to put. But you got all these that were left over from the other map. Like, I don't really think all these would go on one damn train paint. But you see how to put them back want to and if you want to make your own terrain paint that's not gonna have this say asphalt when you make it you just won't tell this to go on asphalt it won't it only goes on the each one of these will only go on what you tell them to go on you can always hide them or just not use them I think they look good myself. I don't know if they're right for this map. Alright, me. But then again, we're only using this as a base texture map. You'd want to also use your macro and detail maps. So in areas where it's rocky, you'd want to make rocky macros to go with those rocks. Because no, these base maps do not look good up close. They're meant to be seen far away. That's why they got macro maps. So that when you get in that range, you get a better map. And then when you get into detail range, you get an even better map. I guess I can quickly, no I can't do anything quickly, uh, I can just show you what one would look like, we'll just do the basic macro, and you can leave whenever you like, this is just for people that need a good night's sleep and need a voice to put them to sleep. Um, it's just easier for me to just turn these off for now. Train thing here. Well, since they're all, well, since that's 48192, then I yeah, just stick a macro. Macro maps need to be high pass filtered. You can't have two color maps, or it'll multiply the colors. If you don't believe me, make one, and then you'll see. So we got this asphalt here that in every photo editor has high pass filter. It's not like you don't have one. Everyone's got that. I use GIMP, but that's only because I can't 
by Photoshop. So the macro as the base goes in the base. The macro's normal map. This damn thing will drive you crazy now. Because it don't remember. It does not remember where the other one went to, so you got to keep them. That's just annoying. So, like I was saying, the macro has a normal map. The macro has a roughness map. The macro also has an ambient occlusion map. And it has a height map, but we don't have a height map for that. Sometimes you can download textures and you'll have a map that's called displacement. You can use that as a height map. Or you can just do this. If you don't have one, copy that one and paste it there. It'll work just the same, but it's in the wrong spot, though. Yeah, that's how, how you can do that. This has its own scale, too. Uh, whatever scaling looks good to you. But remember, the base macro and the base detail need to be high pass filtered. No matter what. Now I know this is not the asphalt. But you can see how, you can appreciate how, well when you get near there, you see a better texture for what would be asphalt if that was the asphalt. But you also see the problem with using a base map for a map of that stuff because, well, it doesn't matter where you paint that if this was a different texture, for say. It wouldn't matter where you paint that. It's going to be those colors. The road will be green where there's grass. It'll be brown where there's dirt. You want to make one that's unique for just, say, asphalt? Don't use that as a base map. Use a different map. Say you want to make a map of asphalt, you could always use a map similar to this one. Asphalt. Um, aerial Asphalt 8K, 4K. That's not the right thing. It's this one. See, that's like, it's not very far away. But it's farther than the, the distance from like macro, so it'll work. I can slip one in there and show you the difference if the map works. Some of my maps aren't working for some reason. I've been moving stuff around and some of the stuff got messed up. Oh, it's 8192, my bad. Ah. It matters, but it won't work if it's not right. All these others, uh, we're just in hell with it, leaving the same for now. We just want to change that base map so I can show you, like, if you were to make a terrain paint that is for the asphalt, for example. Just pretend I made this by clicking new. Same thing. scale that though according to the scale that the base map is if the area is only like 200 and something meters across and that's what you put you don't want to make it it's more or it's going to look wrong look at the skid marks the car there see what the car shows you no those are too damn big so you'd scale that even smaller, say 64. You scale it until it gets right. That's close enough. And you can see how, as you get closer, the macro shows up. You get far away to see the base texture. Now, this ain't great because it tiles too, because, well, there's not that much, you know, really to, to show you there. It's a kind of a small area, but... You don't really see a road that's 
a big texture that you know you can say well this is what the road would look like if it was everywhere no it don't work like that uh, so what I use these kinds of maps for are for the little things like this I'll use them where like uh, now this should paint black because I don't have it set up but say this is your regular island the first map we made the first texture we made and this is going to be where your road's going to be. Well, you only need to paint what's going to be the area you're going to use the road. The rest will stay like it was. And you'll have two different textures. One where the road looks like a road, and the other where it looks like whatever else you're making. Uh, and if you add the detail, what that'll do is going to make it even. Uh, more detail the closer you get. I'm just duplicating the same ones that are in there just for time. And since both the macro and detail fight for the same space when you're up close, you'll probably want to reduce the macro strength for up close and then reduce the detail strength from far away so that it's not overpowering. One's doing 50-50 pretty much up close and the other's doing 50-50 farther away. So getting up close you see the detail. If I change the scaling you should be able to tell when it changes. Yeah, you can see that. And then if you get farther away then you see the macro mapping. I'll change this so you can see it change. Right. Let's make that stronger. Yeah, let's make them both stronger. I should be able to tell the difference. That's why you'd probably, you'd want to use a different texture for that. But you can use it for up, up close, smaller detail. Now, without the macro, it's just a detail map. Now, I did not put in the normals and the roughnesses and all those for those. It'd look a lot better with that in it. But now the, I'll just have the color map in there. So that's a transition from um, from base map to detail map. And this would be where you got the macro in there also. Now the distance that the macro and the details fade are here at the bottom. How far the macro will go at the absolute farthest. And it's got a start fade, end fade. End fade is absolutely the farthest it'll go. So if you were to look at this and say, well, I want the end fade to be 200 then the macro is going to stop a lot sooner. Um, let's say the far 50. Let's see that. Yep, see? Now you're getting closer to the end of the macro map. bring it in even closer and then on top of that you got attenuation now, what exactly attenuation does I can't tell you but somebody can it ain't gonna be me I don't know what it means I mean I kind of know what it means but okay that's what it means it means how it blends it at the end you want this blend less Make that closer to zero. If you want it to blend better, move it closer to one. Same thing would apply up close, I would imagine. It'll be a brief cutoff, but this thing starts pretty close, closer than what you can get, unless you change the start fade. I believe that's what that one is for, so that it starts farther away, but the shit gets confusing. 
It does, man. It's, it does. I just don't mess with it. I leave that stuff. I don't fool with all that. Detail distance the same way. You can tell the detail where to start to fade and where not to. Still flying by itself. I tell you, man, it, 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 it's something else. I tell you, <laughs> I'm thinking a lot of things about the thing right now. I won't say any of them. Uh, yeah, so this will work the same way. We'll turn off the macro and I'll show you. So this is just the detail mapping and it is hard to see because the other mapping is not in there. No, I'm not, I'm not adding them. You can imagine it'd look better. Um, so yeah, the distance for that. So just say 25 and 10. Maybe closer than that. I don't know. Five and ten. Yep. See, now this our detail begins now. Right up close. You only see it when you're right there on it. And the macro. Putting that back in. But you see how the macro also goes where the detail is. There's a way to tell the macro to start farther away. I have to figure out how to do that. I don't remember what I did to do it, but it's not too hard to do. And I'll make this purposely way too big so that we can j clearly see the macro mapping. So yeah, you can see it's fade area now. So back to this thing here. So if the near is start fade zero, the near the far fade is, I don't remember. It's confusing as hell. Turn the attenuation off. Alright, now we're starting to see something here. Up close. Alright, that brings it in. That's the near, right? No. Which one was it? The end. <laughs> the end fade. That's the end. Think of the end of it. The end of it. That's where that fades. So you would think the start fade, if you told it to be 15, would start 15 meters away from you. So it should be. But only if far. I don't know, man. See, that don't make no sense. All right, there's something there. In fade zero. In fade five. Still putting it up close. I know there's a way to do it. I did it. Hell with it. 
I ain't worried that much about it. Alright, so anyway, that's it for this video. May you sleep well tonight. If you have listened this far, then... Then, well, you are entitled to hear a joke. Why not? So this lady goes into... To the vet to see her vet for her little dog. Her dog is a schnauzer. So the dog had problems hearing. The vet told the lady, well to get your dog to hear better then go to the pharmacist and get some nair. That's the hair removal stuff. So she goes to the pharmacist and she says, I would like to get some nair for my um, schnauzer. So the pharmacist says, okay, uh, well, if you're putting it under your armpits, then wait a couple days before shaving. She said, no, it's, it's for my schnauzer. And he's like, well, if, if you mean your legs, no, wait a minute, I'm getting it wrong. <coughs> Basically, I screwed the joke up. Basically, the punchline is, she finds who tells him, no, it's not going on. I know how to do it. Now I'll redo it. So she goes to the pharmacist. <laughs> Damn, I messed this one all up. She goes to the pharmacist, and she says, I'd like to get some near hair removal. So the pharmacist grabs it and hands it to her and says, you know, if you're putting this under your arms, you'll want to wait a couple days before shaving again. Or before putting on deodorant, rather. And she says, no, it's not going under my armpits. He's like, well, if you're putting it on your legs, then um, you'll want to wait a couple days before shaving your legs or whatever the hell she was doing with her legs that she'd have to wait for. I forgot what the hell the damn thing said now. Uh, she goes, no, it's not going on my legs either. He's like, she's like, it's going on my schnauzer. He's like, well, if that's the case, then you shouldn't ride a bike for a couple days. <laughs> yeah, I screwed it all up. I could fix it if I edited this, but I ain't editing this just to edit the end of this video. Oh, man. Anyway, hope you all had a good one. I hope you all have a good one. See you all later.